In the first century BC, the great Cleopatra VII, the Ptolemaic ruler of Egypt, sailed down the Nile River aboard her massive two-story pleasure barge, the Thalamagos. Amongst rulers and high-class women, this was commonplace and not even thought about twice. But fast forward a thousand years, and such a sight aboard a military or merchant vessel would be seen with dread and fear. Women on board ships were considered bad luck. Now, as with most of these superstitions, there is a supernatural aspect and, at least in the minds of mariners at the time, a practical aspect. According to sailors, a woman aboard a ship was seen as a distraction, something that the rowdy men would think about, cause fights, and cause vice aboard the ship. These things the gods of the sea would of course witness, which would anger them. They would summon storms and squalls to punish these men for not paying enough heed and respect to their oceans, sometimes destroying and killing all aboard. This superstition often led to some terrible occurrences. In 1379, a lord by the name of Sir John Arundel set to sea to support the Duke of Brittany. In his travels, he made landfall to, let's say, resupply. In actuality, he let his men ransack a coven of nuns, even letting his men bring some of the women aboard with them. Later in their journey, they encountered a heavy storm that threatened the ship. Realizing it was likely the gods, angered by the women, they were tragically thrown into the sea to be drowned in a vain attempt to appease the gods. Predictably, this had no effect. The ship was destroyed, and, in a stroke of karma, the vast majority of the crew perished, to include Sir John. But that considered, inversely, a naked woman aboard a ship was seen as good luck. A bare woman would supposedly calm the angry spirits of the gods, which is why figureheads on ships would often depict bare-chested women and mermaids. Uh-huh. So women weren't allowed to be on a ship unless they were naked, because the gods would get mad. Sure, sounds a bit fishy to me. Now, of course, the practical aspect, or at least how mariners of the day saw it. To say women weren't allowed on any ship would be untrue. It was really only warships and merchant ships of which life upon these was very harsh. These ships would go to sea for long periods of time, and in some of the worst locations to sail in the world. The conditions aboard were deplorable. The food was detestable and lacked vital nutrition. Clean water was hard to come by. Sleeping conditions were bad. And medicine aboard was nearly non-existent. This was just living aboard a ship. Running it was rife with backbreaking manual labor though the common belief at the time was that women were excellent navigators, which is why many figureheads depicted women wide-eyed and forward-facing to aid the ship in navigation. Most men of the time scarcely wanted to set to sea themselves, thinking of the terrible conditions aboard and the high likelihood of ending up in a watery grave. To imagine their daughters or wives in such deplorable conditions was just beyond thinking. Since the Industrial Revolution and the advent of steam and diesel power, Going to sea is a much easier process. Living conditions are better and the labor less intensive. But it's hard to pinpoint whether this is the reason or that the feelings on gender norms and female roles in society have made it so that women are now more accepted on the high seas. But today, women are fully integrated in most of the world's navies and also play a huge part in the merchant marines and shipping industries. The mere mention of women being bad luck on a ship are often met with incredulous and often disapproving looks, the sentiment being just as archaic as the ships it was bred on. So this superstition, like many, have died with time. But what do you think? Will women being on your ship anger the gods? Well, probably not, but better safe than so w wait, no, no, not, not better safe than sorry. Women are allowed on ships, that's just silly. All the same, fair winds and following seas to you shipmates.